Today on the Commander's Report, I'm going to be reacting to Pro Football Focus's full roster breakdown of the Washington Commanders heading into the 2024 season. And listen, guys, Pro Football Focus, they make you guys pay $25 a month for their services, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. But today, we're going to be talking about what they wrote in their article for free. All right, so the biggest strength, biggest weakness, the X Factor for 2024, their rookie to watch, the over-under 6.5 wins, and then their overall ranking among teams in the National Football League. So guys, like I said, $25 a month is the asking price for Pro Football Focus Premium. That's ridiculous, all right? So today on the Commander Support, we're going to give you this premium content 100% free. So make sure you click that subscribe button right now for free premium content on your Washington Commanders right here on YouTube. Okay, so now let's get to who Pro Football Focus thinks is the biggest strength of, or what is the biggest strength of the Commanders heading into the year. It's the rushing offense, led of course, led, of course by Brian Robinson Jr. This is what the Pro Football Focus staff had to say about the Commander's run game. The Commander struggled across the board last season, but ranked 15th in rushing grade. Capable ball carriers like Brian Robinson and Chris Rodriguez Jr. led the way. The incumbent running backs, along with new quarterback Jaden Daniels, should give Washington a functional rushing attack in 2024 and beyond. Now, guys, when it comes to the rushing attack, I think the issue is if you don't have a good or at least a decent offensive line, it almost doesn't matter who your running backs are and who's carrying the football. There's going to be defenders to take them down. And right now, I mean, the reality is the commander's offensive line, I mean, Andrew Wiley's coming back as the starting right tackle. He gave up nine sacks last year. Tyler Biotish is as, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, middle of the road as it gets at center. I guess that's an improvement, but it doesn't really inspire confidence. Nick Allegretti has never been a full-time starter. Cornelius Lucas was okay, I guess, in relief of Charles Leno Jr. last year at left tackle. But is he really a legit starting left tackle in the league? I really don't think so. The left side of the, of the offensive line is definitely in dire straits right now. And listen, you know, having good running backs like Brian Robinson Jr., I think Chris Rodriguez Jr. is going to surprise some people this year as well. Plus having a quarterback that gives you a numbers advantage in Jaden Daniels with the run game is going to help out quite a bit. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, if you don't have a good offensive line, it's really hard to get the run game going. You're not able to move the line of scrimmage. There's defenders in the backfield. Your running backs and your quarterback have to be really effective at making guys miss and getting into the open field on their own. And, you know, I just think at the end of the day here, it's probably not going to be the biggest strength of the commander's offense this year. Uh, I think that our just in general, he, they think this is going to be the best thing about the Commander's roster, period. I think the best thing about this Commander's roster heading into next year is going to be the pass rush led by Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Dorrance Armstrong. You're bringing in Johnny Newton. And then you have some really good linebackers this year as well that all know how to blitz. Frankie Louvu is going to be playing that hybrid kind of uh, blitz linebacker role this year. And you also have Jamin Davis, who's playing a little bit of that role in OTAs right now. Bobby Wagner is still one of the best blitzing linebackers in football. So there's going to be a lot of people at the line of scrimmage. There's going to be a lot of rotating pieces. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff. Brought on by new head coach Dan Quinn and his new defensive play caller Joe Witt Jr. And I talk about what I expect the commander's defense to look like in this video right here. That's what the thumbnail looks like. I'm going to put the link to that video in the comments and description. So if you want to know what the commander's defense is going to look like and why I'm super excited about the commander's pass rush heading into the future, make sure you go check out that video after you're done with today's video. So what say you guys? Let me know down there in the comments section. What will be Washington's biggest strength heading into 2024. I think it's going to be the pass rush. Pro Football Focus thinks it's going to be the rushing offense. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. So now, Pro Football Focus thinks the biggest weakness for the commanders this year will be the run defense. This is what they have to say about the front seven here in Washington. The Commanders allowed the most points in the NFL last season, and the primary culprit was a run defense unit that finished 31st in run defense grade last season. They've since added viable players at multiple levels, including linebackers Bobby Wagner and Frankie Louvu. Head coach Dan Quinn is making his new defense a 
priority. And listen, guys, I do think that the run defense should be a lot better this year. Bobby Wagner is still one of the best run-defending linebackers in football. I still think Jamin Davis has room to grow in that regard. Frankie Louvu is a very sound tackler as well. And if you can keep Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne healthy, they're not going to be able to run the middle all that much, all right? So I think that this run defense, which was terrible last year in this Vic Fangio, too high safety heavy type defense. I just don't really see that happening this year because you're going to have a guy like Jeremy Chin coming into the box as a true strong safety or even a hybrid linebacker. You're going to have probably one deep safety for most of your uh, alignments this year. That's just the way Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. roll. So you're going to have a numbers advantage. You got some good players in here that know how to tackle. I think the run defense should be a lot better this year. And I don't think it's going to be as much of a weakness as pro football focus is saying it's going to be. I think the biggest weakness is the O-line, which we've already talked about on today's show. It was definitely the biggest weakness of this offense last year. Couldn't protect the football. Didn't really provide much push. Uh, for the run game and you know we've looked at this crew before and you know there just doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in me now maybe I'm wrong maybe Nick Allegretti's freaking fantastic maybe Cornelius Lucas or Brandon Coleman comes out of nowhere and they're legit left tackles maybe Andrew Wiley rises from the ashes of his career and is awesome again like I don't know man like hopefully those things happen but you know just being somebody that knows the trends of this game and like all these different things it's just not looking great up front offensively for this for the commanders heading into the year and I just don't know if this offensive line is really going to cut it in terms of really uh, building a competitor here in 2024 if you continue to build it and it continues to get better Brandon Coleman develops into something nice maybe Braden Daniels comes out of nowhere off his injury and develops into something nice maybe we can have a different discussion then but right now on paper this offensive line is definitely a problem in my opinion so still to come here on the Commander's Report, the X Factor for 2024, the rookie to watch, the over-under six and a half wins, and then the overall team ranking, all from Pro Football Focus, coming up here in just a second. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Prize Picks and a big shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring today's edition of the Commander's Report. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the Prize Picks app today and use our code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100 and prize picks has uh, specials for new and returning users alike for the start of the NBA finals and the finals mean more on prize picks and so do the star players you get boosted payouts on select basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else prize picks is also America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community Today, if you want an example of what kind of prize picks looks like, here's my actual prize picks projection for Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals. I got the less on three-pointers made for Luka Doncic. I took the more on Jaden Daniels, three-pointers made at one and a half. And I took the more on points for Carl Anthony Towns at 19.5. If I get all these right, I get a nice little payout. It's a lot of fun, guys. It really does provide more juice to your viewing experience when you're watching the NBA playoffs. And with the finals on the horizon here, it's going to make it even more interesting. So prize picks is super simple to play. All you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and if you get all of them right or even if you do a flex play here you can watch the winnings roll in get started now if you haven't already at prizepicks.com slash clns or download the prize picks app today and get a first time deposit match up to 100 dollars when you use code clns pick more or pick less it really is that easy with our friends at prize picks so Pro Football Focus's X Factor for 2024 for the Commanders is going to be quarterback Jaden Daniels, and this is what the PFF staff had to say about the rookie QB. Washington brought in several veterans and put together a huge draft class, but the team's fate lies in the hands of second overall pick Jaden Daniels. The 2023 Heisman winner was the best player in college football last season. His dual threat ability should inject life into a team that has perpetually struggled to find a franchise quarterback. So listen, guys, I definitely think Jaden Daniels is obviously going to be important. I think he's going to be the week one starter. Uh, I think that he's going to be relatively ready to go uh, heading into his first season. Now playing behind, you know, a, a rough offensive line is probably going to mean some problems for him heading into the league. He was protected extremely well at LSU. He's not really used to like 
big time NFL pressure like he's going to have to face this year, in my opinion. And that's going to be the X factor this year for the Commanders. It's going to be the offensive line because if the offensive line can prove me wrong, okay, and Braden and like Braden Daniels comes out of nowhere and starts somewhere, and the Brandon Coleman plays really well, or if Andrew Wiley. Uh, you know, has a good season, and, you know, Tyler Biotish is solid, and Nick Allegretti has a good season. Who knows? If all that stuff happens, yeah, this team could probably make the playoffs this year. Jaden Daniels, I think, is a pretty polished quarterback heading into the league. He's going to bring value as a rusher. You got really good receivers. I think the defense is going to punch above its weight this year because of all the different games and stunts and all these different things they're going to do in the pass rush. So I think that if the O-line can prove me wrong, can kind of punch above their weight, so to speak, I think that this team could be a potential playoff contender. Okay, somebody, a team that could make the playoffs as a wild card or something along those lines. Uh, but at the end of the day, guys, it is very hard to be a good team in the NFL, especially on the offensive side of the ball, if you can't dominate the trenches, if you can't win, can't move the line of scrimmage, you can't run the football. I mean, the offensive line, I mean, it's the foundational building block for a reason, and I still think the commanders have significant problems in that area. Now, uh, the, when it goes to, comes to the rookie to watch, Pro Football Focus says you should be watching Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle from Illinois. This is what Pro Football Focus had to say about Johnny Newton. Assuming Newton is healthy moving forward, Washington got an absolute steal in the second round. He was the most consistent interior defender in college football over the past two seasons while at Illinois. His talent and versatility should help a defensive line that finished 29th in overall grade last season. Now, I, I, I have no problem with keeping your eye on Johnny Newton. I think he's going to have an awesome rookie season. But because I didn't name Jaden Daniels as my X Factor, he's going to be my rookie to watch. Because obviously, when you have a quarterback taken uh, at number two overall, you're going to keep a close eye on him because, you know, he is skinny. He is electric uh, as a rusher. You know, he's got a very interesting physical profile and, you know, throwing profile as well because he did have so many weapons and good protection there at LSU. Now that he's thrown into a situation where the offensive line maybe isn't going to be the best in the world, how is he going to be able to react to that, especially with the new speed that he's going to have to be facing in NFL defenses? I'm expecting uh, some really great flashes from Jaden Daniels this year, but with the offensive line play, what I expect it to be, I do think there's going to be some bumps in the road here for J.D. Now, before we get into the rest of today's show, make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you are a Commander's Report Real One. If you support our show, you click that subscribe button, you watch all of our uh, videos that we put up on the channel. Really do appreciate all of your guys' support. And if you are a real one, you know that liking today's video is the fastest and easiest way to support our channel. So what are you waiting for? Click that thumbs up icon right now. So Pro Football Focus is guess as to whether the Commanders will hit the over or the under for their current 6.5 wins uh, projected, they're going to go with the under, okay? And this is their reasoning for why they think they're going to underperform their projection this year. While it wouldn't be surprising to see the commanders approach or even surpass this win total, they are still starting a rookie quarterback and need Im immense improvement on defense. This season is more about Daniels and the rest of the rookie class progressing than it is about any number of victories. So for me, guys, I think that they might get over, and I'm going to project that they get over, okay? In my official record prediction where I break down every single game, I landed on seven wins for the Commanders. So I think they get over, but just over six and a half wins this year. If you want to see my full record prediction where I break down every single game, I get my win-loss projection for all 17 games, you can go check that one out. It's also in the comments and description of today's show. Link in the comments and description. Make sure you check it out after today's show. If you want to see all seven games, I think the Commanders will win in 2024. Now it's your turn. Over or under? Will Washington be over or under six and a half wins for the 2024 season? Give me an O if you think over or type U if you think they're going to be under. Then Pro Football Focus uh, overall ranking here, they ranked all 32 NFL rosters and teams. They had the Commanders at 27th, okay? And, you know, there's a lot of people that have them lower than this. So I think this is actually pretty generous by Pro Football Focus, especially given the offensive line play uh, that they have currently. Uh, but, you know, there's just a few teams that they have lower than the Commanders, right? You, had, you have the Arizona Cardinals, the New England Patriots, the Carolina Panthers, the New York Giants, and the Denver Broncos. And honestly, man, the Commanders play a lot of these teams next year. They play the Cardinals, right? They play the Panthers. They play the Giants twice. So if the pro football focus is correct here and, you know, 
Commanders are better than those teams, that's a pretty much guaranteed four wins for the Washington Commanders next season, which I think we uh, all hope <laughs> actually ends up happening because you got to beat the Cardinals, you got to beat the Panthers, and you got to beat the Giants because those teams are in pretty dire straits right now. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now if you haven't already for more premium Commanders content for free every single day right here on YouTube.